got a kind of it's so bright. Yeah, it's my <laughs> He's got a kind of uni- universal quality uh, to him because he's going through what most teenagers go through at the age of 18 or, or, or that kind of age when, you, when you're leaving school and there's a huge pressure on you to go to university. I'm James Feck. I'm 17 and I don't like to talk that much. My parents think I'm crazy. I have a father who's having plastic surgery. Oh my God, Dad! A mother whose marriage lasts barely a weekend. A sister, she is writing her memoirs at the age of 23. You want to explain your face? I'm envisioning the cover of my memoir. That's the most important part of any book. The cover. I think James just suffers from from um, from being too smart, and he can't. Um, I say suffer because he's he he can't quite assimilate with other with other people really easily and some people can just let go and and, and dance and be free and you know like literally da- literally dance I don't mean dance in the metaphorical sense I mean actually dancing he finds quite difficult um, uh, some people get very easy at letting go and not being so self-aware and James suffers from being really smart and not not being quite capable of just letting letting himself just be and it's true, it's a story where uh, everybody, uh, the young people and the adults, they are not so adults, are looking for an identity, which I think is a theme uh, typical of our, of our era, of, our, of the period we live in, especially with the crisis that the world is facing today. And so the search of identity is more urgent than maybe some years ago. People always talk about their lives, but their lives just aren't that interesting. You should only say something that's interesting, or absolutely has to be said. I have nothing interesting to say. And you think I'm the one who needs a shrink? She's not a shrink. I mean, everybody's either a teenager, has been a teenager, or has a teenage son or daughter, so I think there's a everyone can see themselves or someone else that they know or someone that they're related to in that stage of your life when you're just terrified really really scared of of, of, uh, of fitting in I don't have any goals I'm only 17 I mean how am I supposed to know what I'm gonna do with my life I told you I'm not going what else did my mother tell you? So complicated. He thinks everything. He just thinks everything is so important, and that everything won't. It just everything won't be all right. You've got and it will be. It, but yeah, that, I mean, I think that's a kind of message that that the, the, the film conveys is that probably everything will be okay. Toby is uh, is um, is is very alike the character of James, the role of the uh, in the film. He's a tender boy. Uh, very intelligent, very deep, uh, very sensitive, and also a little isolated. No, he lives his own life, like many teenagers today. Well, your mother told me that she's worried about you. Does she feel you're antisocial and lonely? Just because you're alone doesn't necessarily mean you're lonely. Things would be so much easier if I was a dog. Put some shoes on and try being a human being. He just wants to, wants to live a really simple life and just read books and, 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 and doesn't see the need to, to buy, buy into all, uh, all this rubbish and crap. In, in, especially with teenagers, he's got a problem with his peers. He just thinks they're all idiots, which is not fair. I think he's, he is being a little bit unfair there. Uh, the novel uh, on which the film is based uh, uh, had a, a very precise psychology of all the characters. But then uh, facing actors such as Marcia Guihard and Ellen Burstyn or Lucy Liu, I think they add something to the original uh, novel, to the original screenplay, because they add uh, their own personality. For instance, Marcia Guihard is a very ironic woman, uh, very tender, but also very tough. And so I think that she, she gave the film uh, something that uh, I didn't expect to have before meeting her. Oh. 
Well, what do you mean you're not going to college at all? Not particularly interested in, and stand the idea of spending four years in close quarters with college students. Oh, what's so bad about college students? Yeah, they, they are dysfunctional. I think that, that maybe 20, 30 years ago they would have been they would have been considered really dysfunctional. But now, having having uh, parents who have been divorced multiple times, uh, you know, have had have had different marriages and. Um, and a dad who wants to get plastic surgery and stuff, that, you know, that's not uncommon. This is not the first time I'm making a film in America. I did the film many years ago called Corrupt with Harvey Keitel and the leader of the Sex Pistols, Johnny Rotten. And when I hired Johnny Rotten, everybody told me, well, don't hire him because you're going to have trouble. I didn't have any trouble. But uh, just to answer your question, in that film, uh, Johnny Rotten was exactly like the character he was uh, supposed to play, no? A very strange and weird uh, boy, uh, listening to music, isolated. So I would say that the same happened to me with Toby Rebo. It's very similar to the character of James. And so it was not difficult to deal with him because uh, he just had to play himself. And uh, the difference between him and actors such as Ellen uh, or Marcia is that uh, they uh, have the experience of the creativity, while Toby has the, an experience of creativity. But this matches, and I think uh, it gives the film a quality that uh, I think makes a good film. Everyone's got a rhythm of their own. I don't have one. I can see everyone moving to that beat, you know? Gotta go now, gotta get there, here. You wanna come outside for a joint? Laughing, dancing, whatever. Do you want to dance? No. Later? Promise? No. All I hear is silence. He's got a universal quality to him because he's at the age of 18 going through what most teenagers go through, leaving school and not knowing what to do, whether to go to university or um, go to college, get a proper job, try and succeed and, 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 and that can be paralyzing and scary to suddenly be in the real world and, and have to make basically the choices that are going to dictate the, how your life is going to go. The story is set in New York. I think it's a typical New Yorkese uh, environment. Uh, the parents of uh, James are typical of a Wall Street uh, businessman and lawyer. The mother who has an art gallery is typical of New York. So I would say that New York is uh, one of the leading roles of this film. You're a loner. Some minor defect in the most hidden recesses of the second chromosome in my DNA that makes me different. Some girls like loners. You want to dance? What a fucking weirdo, man. Look at you. Hey, don't. Oh. Hey, Max, you're going to have to come back to the room sometime. Well, I would say that the festival uh, should think about themselves. I think that in this era where internet is so important, it changes all the rules, I think that filmmaking will change very shortly. So also festivals should change. They should uh, uh, try to be more appealing to young people. Uh, at the moment all the festivals, Miami is a very good one, uh, they, all the festivals are more uh, oriented toward an adult's audience and I think they should try to explore uh, the new world of, uh, of youths uh, interesting. I've never been to the film festival before and oh, no, no. this is amazing. <laughs> this is like cartoon water. I've never, it's, it's like it's been painted. It's so beautiful. I, I, I wear Hawaiian shirts at home. Okay. Just because it's difficult to feel upset when you're wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> but now, it, I, it, I literally couldn't be happier. I, f I got ill on the plane because the air conditioning is so cold. And like by the time I got there, I had was all shaky and feverish, and this this has completely got rid of any sickness, any kind of. It's so cold in London. Really, right now. It's so cold. I think we're going to get more snow this week, and I'm going back there today, which is a real shame. There's a in, you can't see this. There's an infinity pool there. <laughs> People are walking around in bathrobes. It's this hotel is a bit like rehab because everyone wears like white bathrobes and the guys who work here wear like lab coats and there's like little bits of fruit and water everywhere that you go. My parents think I'm crazy, but if I'm crazy, 
what the hell is everyone else? This place is wicked. <laughs> this place is really good. And the film festival was amazing as well. And the, 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 the thing that I like... Somebody else is looking for one. Yeah, I'll be on that guy later. Um, the thing that I like about the festival and the thing that is good about our film that's here is that it's just, you know, a, a meeting in the middle of a whole bunch of different places and cultures and nationalities and stuff we got Italian production and I'm an English actor playing an American in New York and it's over here in Miami with a whole bunch of you know Spanish and um, Brazilian Mexican French English Portuguese you know every you know l l films from everywhere and that's what's great about this place